Hi, I'm Matt from edgecraft.org. It's been a while since I've made a video, but I thought I'd go over how to make your own crops in Minecraft as one of our advanced skills. I'm with Edgecraft. I do our Minecraft camps uh, where we teach kids how to make Minecraft mods using Java programming. And I thought, hey, let's add some healthy vegetables to Minecraft and we'll start with some nice, fresh kale. So I should tell you ahead of time that crops are an interesting, crops are considered a block in Minecraft and the interesting thing about them is they change over time and they also aren't blocks in the sense that we've done before where it's an issue of the JSON file taking one texture and then going and turning it into a square, or, I'm sorry, turning it into a cube. What it does is it takes the texture and goes and makes what's called a, a cross texture. <clears throat> you've probably noticed that if you've looked at a lot of the plants in Minecraft, that they, they're just kind of one texture crossed over the, another, the same texture, actually. And so, um, and they also change over time. So the crop will start out small, and it'll grow and grow and grow, and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, the maximum stages crops tend to use a seven, but you can make them whatever you want. You can make a three stage crop, a four stage crop, a one stage crop. And so we're gonna, and in kale, I believe we're doing a three stage one. So anyway, uh, here we go. I'm gonna show you the code involved in making and adding your own crop, in my case, kale, to Minecraft. All right, so first things first, let's uh, do the things we already know how to do. So we're gonna go to this init package and we're gonna go to mod items. And what we're gonna do is we have our material items. Where are we gonna put, oh, consumable items. So we have our consumable items, we've done the food item, whatever, okay. So we're gonna create our, and you may not have all of these comments up here and all of these other things. But if you've downloaded the Educraft starter files, you do. And if you've upgraded it to 1.11, you'll have it. So this mod is a 1.11 one. If you don't know, if you haven't already done this, upgrade your mod to 1.11 because, well, that's the future. And we just have to deal with that. And I can link you to our 1.11 or our video on how to upgrade your mod to 1.11. Um, but right now I'm gonna pretend you've already done that and I'm going to create our kale. So public static item kale. And that's just gonna be the food itself that you harvest from the crop. When you break it, you get kale and you can eat that kale and you can enjoy how delicious it is. And in order to do that, we are going to go down to your, under the init file we're going to construct your kale. So we're going to say kale is you know, equals a new, and we're gonna say item food. And really we don't even need to give this its own class. It can get everything from the item food class because the item food has its own um, constructor in which, which intakes certain things like say how much it heals you by, heals you by that many hearts, two half hearts, how satiated you are. We're gonna say it's 4.5, and remember this is a float. So we're gonna put an F next to it. And whether wolves can eat it or not. Wolves do not like vegetables, so I'm gonna say false. Wolves do not eat our kale. Okay, and because we don't have to create our own class for this, we can instead just use the things provided by the item food class. And right here, right now, we're gonna set the unlocalized name, set the registry name, and we are going to set the creative tab. So set unlocalized name. I'm going to call it kale. And then dot set registry name. And if you remember, one of the big changes in 1.11 is that registry names are all in lowercase. And I still like to have a distinction between my registry name and my unlocalized name. So I like to say item underscore kale. Okay. 
And so remember in the old tutorials, you'll see I used to make it a uppercase with no underscore. Well, we don't do that anymore in Minecraft 1.11 everything's lowercase all the names registry names and unlocalized names okay and then we're going to set the creative tab set creative tab and creative tabs dot food all right and that ought to do it all right so we're going to have this food item called kale and don't forget the semicolon and now we're going to import item food because in our other one, our item food item, we didn't have to import item food because we just created our own class and so it imported this class. But heck, item food is a class that comes with Minecraft and if you don't want to do anything weird with your food, just use item food. Don't bother with anything else. Okay, now we're going to register it. So game registry.register. And we're going to register our fresh kale. And register render, we're going to let the game know that it's going to get a texture for this. And it's going to go find that. And if you can't find it, it's just going to be the typical purple and black cube or square or whatever um, until we actually make a uh, texture for it. But I'm going to do the code first, and then I'm going to do the textures because I'm a jerk like that. All right, so we have the actual food item that you're going to get from this crop. Whoopty flip and do. Next up, we're going to have the seeds because when you plant a crop, you tend to plant the seeds. So, public static item kale seeds. And we're going to have our, we're going to put it in our init kale underscore seeds and to make this work what they're going to do is we're actually going to create our own class for this so we're going to say equals new item kale or sorry item seed kale okay so when you see this you know okay we're creating a new class for the kale seeds don't lose your mind I'll show you how to do that, but you're going to get an error until you actually create this class. Um, but what we're going to use with this class is you are going to, for one thing, have the actual crop block in the class and the ground upon which you can actually use the, seal, the um, seeds. And the ground that you can use the seeds are the farmland in Minecraft. So blocks dot farmland because you know you take your hoe you right click the dirt and boom it becomes farmland and you can't plant crops on anything else so your kale is going to only grow on farmland okay and so let's uh well put our semicolon there and yeah, there is no class like this, so we are gonna create that, but before we do that, I'm gonna do this so we don't forget it. Game registry dot register. And we're gonna register our kale seeds. Did I say seed or seeds? I said seeds. Kale seeds. And we're gonna get our register our texture for it. Okay, and now let's create this class. So if you click on this, if you hover, it'll give you the option create class item seed kale. So I'm going to click on that and we're going to get this screen for this new item. And I'm going to show you what to do with this. You will um, click finish and uh, boom, we get this. Item seed kale extends item. It does extend uh, item, but more specifically, it extends another class that extends item, okay? So there's a class called item seeds, and that's a class that comes with vanilla Minecraft. That's a class that extends item, but also has special features for it that deals with how seeds work. And on top of that, we're gonna do a thing called implements. 
Now implements is a funny feature in Java. It's when one class can sort of implement complex concepts from um, another class, and that class is called a, uh, oh, it's another thing that begins with I. Um, I'll check that out. It implements a, well, interface. And that's, there are certain special features. There's a special interface Minecraft makes for um, things that grow, for the um, things that you plant in the game. And the interface is called interface, or I, plantable. So it's interface plantable that is implemented by item seed kale. It extends item seeds, which means that um, it's basically a subclass of item seeds and it implements I plantable. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to import the things we need for our class to understand those things. So click on item seeds and you're going to get this drop down menu. You're going to go to import item seeds. Click on I plantable. You get this drop down menu, import I plantable. So you need these things to be features of this class. Okay. And I'm going to do this. This is risky. I'm going to add constructor. To item seed kale okay and so the um, item seeds automatically has features in its constructor class or constructor method and item seed kale is going to use basically it intakes um, a block and the block is the crop that grows from the seed the other one is the block that you can plant this seed in Okay, and I'm going to delete this comment because we don't really need it. So I'm going to um, define what these things are. This dot crops equals crop, uh, not craps, crops, and this dot soil block ID equals soil. Okay, and so I've just talked about these. There is no field for these. Fields are just variables that work within a specific method. So I'm going to define them. I'm going to create these features called private block crops, private block soil block ID. Oh, that's not block. I, that's the same typo I make all the time. So basically in this class, we're going to have a variable called crops and it stores a block and it's private which means it's only seen by this class and what that is is it's the crop taken in by item seed kale that um, grows from these seeds the other one is soil block id which is described in the constructor as soil and that is the block upon which you can plant this seed Okay, and there's only one more feature we're going to add to this. We're going to override a method described in the general item seeds class. So we're going to hit the annotation. Let's hold down shift and press two, and you're going to get this at sign, and you're going to type override. And what that means is, hey, there's this method that normally gets used in item seeds for item seed kale. We're going to do we're going to do this instead. So when you have a class that inherits, class that I'm seeing kale that inherits things from item seeds, if you're gonna take methods from that and you're gonna mess with them, you need to, it's better to have this override annotation so that the program knows that you intend to override it. Um, it also helps in case you don't override something that you think you're overriding, it tells you, hey, you didn't override that. Um, that's helpful for people yeah, if you're doing a lot of Java, you, you, you eventually see why this is helpful. Maybe at this point you don't, but trust me, you want to use these override annotation. All right, so public net.minecraft.block.state.i block state get plant. And net.minecraft.world.i block access world block position pause all right and within that it's 
going to return this dot crops dot get default state. This is a really fancy way. I'm gonna import block, but yeah. So basically what this does is when you plant these seeds, it, it's got this method here. And what this does is it gets the block that is the that represents the plant in its default state, which means it gets it, the block in its baby form, little bitty baby form, and then it lets it grow. And all the data about growing is in the block class for the crop, but this is the seed. So all it means is when you plant the seed, get the block for this crop in its default state, which is the first state. And you've experienced this when you plant wheat and you get the little bits in the ground, that's the default state for wheat. In this case, it's this new block, this block that it takes when you call or when you uh, initialize this class. And we have actually already done that. We say we're gonna initialize a thing called crop kale which is a block class that we're actually gonna make and then import into here. Okay, so far everything we've seen has been mostly a rehash of creating items. Um, Minecraft has this way of, um, in our brains we associate, say, materials with tools, um, the, but the way you program it, your material is a completely separate thing and your ingots are just items that you use to construct tools and then those tools simply have properties that you establish with what your material is. And it's very similar for crops. You create an item called the seed. You create an item that's the food and um, based on how recipes work or how um, the classes work, you associate them through that. The game doesn't intuitively know the way humans do that kale seeds planted in the ground make kale crops that are then harvested into kale food. Um, so we have to set that up. So we've made our kale seed, we've made our kale food. Kale seeds, just any other item. Um, only one difference is we've added a method that lets it know that we plant a kale crop from it. Um, and the kale that is the food is exactly like any other food item. We've already made food items, and so we've already just done that. And we didn't even need to make our own class. We just ex said that it's a new item food, and then in the using the constructor method, gave it its features of how much health it restores, how satiated the player is, not how much health, sorry, how much hunger it restores, how satiated the player is, and whether you can feed a tool. So now we're gonna focus on creating the block, the actual block that is the kale crop that actually you see grow in the game. Yeah. Let's start by going to our mod blocks and setting up our actual crop, the physical crop that you see grow in the game. So we're going to first create the variable uh, public static block and I'm gonna call it or crop underscore kale. And that's going to be our kale crop okay and it's going to need its own class so i'm going to type crop kale and that's in, under this init method uh, it's going to be a new uh, block crop kale and we will create that later. But while I'm here, I'm going to register the item. So register block crop kale. And I'm going to register the texture. Register render block underscore kale. What's wrong? Oh, no, crop kale. Silly me. Okay, and now I'm going to create the class that is, this is really the where the work goes. Okay, and so I'm going to click on this block crop kale and go to create class block crop kale. And it's not gonna be in my mod init package. It's going to be in our block classes. So under package, we're gonna put it in the block classes. And it's super class. 
Well, I'll worry about that later. So click finish and we, here we go. And it, it doesn't just extend block. It extends one of the subclasses of block, block crops. A lot of modding Minecraft ha is more about building on the code that the people who created Minecraft used um, and not having to, well, not reinventing the wheel. So there's block crops is already a class that does a lot of the things that we want to do. So we're going to extend that um, already. So here's two variables we're going to need. And these are variables that are called constants, meaning they always stay the same. So they're usually done in all caps. First of all, we're going to say public, static, and final. So it's public, meaning other classes can access it. It's static, meaning it doesn't change. And it's final, which is kind of another way of saying it doesn't change. Um, if I were better at Java, I could probably explain this better. I'll leave it up to you to figure that out. Maybe in a later video, I'll explain what some of these things mean. I might even do a basics of Java for Minecraft modding. But for now, trust me, say final. And it's going to be a new type of variable. We've had strings, we've had, um, we've had integers. This type of variable is an axis aligned BB. So an axis aligned BB is an array. So you have these brackets next to it. And what it does, it, it stores a list of information. Okay, and in this case, it's a list of the particulars of the um, size of the crop file that we're making. So it's a new axis aligned BB. And now in brackets, we're going to have the dimensions. Um, it's a weird thing. So we make it for each iteration. Our plant grows and it gets bigger and bigger. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a few of these. Okay, okay, you get it? I get it, and that's what matters to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, a new axis aligned BB. By the way, this BB stands for bounding block. It's kind of like a, uh, Minecraft's made up of th cubes that exist in this sort of dimension and Sometimes you want something to not exactly be a cube. So the point of axis align BB is if it's not a full cube, how big is it within the size of a normal cube? And so axis align BB is a way of saying, okay, it's not a full cube. Instead, it's only this size. And so what we do is we give an, uh, X values, Y values, and Z values. If you remember, Minecraft is a 3D world built around an X value, a Y value, and a Z value um, as points on a 3D plane. So you say this is, you give two values for the extent of the X, two values for the extent of the Y, and two values for the extent of the Z. So in its initial phase, I don't want it to be very big. So I'm going to say 0, 0.0. Oh, these are, by the way, these are, um, you end it with a D. Um, they're considered uh, decimals. 0.0d so it's it's a comma okay so those are the x values here are the y values 0.0d 1.0d it's got a little height and the z values the other direction it's got it's not zero the way this is but it's 0.125 so it's still pretty small and 1.0d and those are the x values Okay, and that's what it is for the first one. Okay, for the second one, I'm going to say, I have another comment, new axis aligned beep. Now I'm going to say, it's still small for the X. But I'm going to give it a little bit more height. Oops, wait, I skipped one. So X, Y. Okay. Nope. X, Y. So you gotta give it a little height. 
and expand it a bit along the z axis. So 0.1875d, 1.0d. And I'm just going to add the semicolon right here to help. And um, finally, I'm going to just give it, and feel free to play with these numbers. This is really something where you're gonna, if you don't like what you see in the game, come back to this and mess with it. Um, yeah, and see what happens. Or just take my numbers and just live your life free of the worry about it. So here we go, new axis aligned BB. And finally, it's still tiny along the x-axis. And it grows a little bit more. Zero, zero. Oops, zero. Grows a little bit more. And along the z-axis, five, six, two, five, d. And that ought to do it. And Honest, oh, what's wrong? I <laughs> forgot to actually name the variable. So I have a public static final variable that is an axis aligned bounding block. And I'm, it's because it's a constant, it's going to be all capitals and it's going to be kale underscore AABB, which stands for axis aligned bounding block. Meaning that thing that tells you how big the block actually is as opposed to being a full block. Okay. So we've got it as it grows. And now we're gonna have another one in order to determine how big it is, the age is gonna do it. Okay, so I'm gonna type public static final, just like with the earlier one, and proper, no, proper t, there we go, integer. I'm gonna type kale underscore age and proper t integer dot create here's what it's called age that's the property and the minimum age is zero and the maximum age is two so, so there's three stages of the age of kale now grain has six and i think the maximum is seven and so to keep things simple, I'm just gonna make kale a three stage plant, okay? And so those are the main things I'm gonna use. Now I'm gonna create the constructor method, public block crop kale, uh, super meaning, hey, take all that stuff from the method above you and that's good stuff. Um, but I'm going to create the unlocalized name and the registry name. So this dot set unlocalized name. And it's going to be crop underscore kale, the same name we gave the variable. Oh, but within quotes. Because it takes in a string. And this dot set registry name. And our registry name, we usually begin with whether it's a block or an item just to distinct it, to give it a distinguishing feature from the unlocalized name. So it's a block drop kale. Okay, so that's our constructor. That's pretty simple. Now we just have a few features that are pretty common that being a um, block crops, it'll know how to use. Okay, so we have one which is we're going to use our override annotation and say and get, make it protected, meaning it can't change. So um, no matter what happens to this whole kale extravaganza, whatever you use to um, harvest is always the same. So we're going to say item and get crop. So that is a method that tells us specifically the crop that is acquired from the harvest of this plant. And it's going to be kale. So we're going to return oh, mod items dot kale because 
that's the item. And what do we need? To, we need to import item. That's right. From okay, another method we need to override is what seed creates this crop. So that's another protected because that doesn't change. Get seed. And in that case, that method's going to be return the seed that we use to plant this crop. So mod items dot kale seeds. Okay. So now we have that means going. And now we're going to create the system that sizes it. So we created our bounding block up here, but now we need a method that actually enforces that. Um, so that's another override method because we're gonna override the basic block crops method. And we're going to say public axis aligned because this method returns that feature an axis aligned bounding block. Get bounding box. Sorry, bounding box, not bounding block. I block state, which we call state. I block access, which we call the source and block position, which we call pause for position. And we return our constant kale a b b and now this is really long don't freak out don't freak out i'm just telling you right now don't freak out. i'm freaking out man all right so we're going to cast this feature to an integer integer and we're going to get the value from it That value is this dot get age property. So we want to know how old this plant is in order to understand it better. Let's close the, all the parentheses involved. And from that, we want it to be an integer value. And uh, what are we doing here? Oh, we want to import block position too. So click on block position, go to import block position, go to iBlock access, import iBlock access. Okay, so from this, we have a feature where it has these bounding blocks that change as the crop ages. So now we have a method that gets the bounding block at the different ages of the crop, which go from zero, one, and two. So there's three stages of kale. Okay. And next up, we're going to have a maximum age so that our crop doesn't try to keep growing. And we're gonna override because our block crops have a different idea about what that should be. Public integer get max age. And in our case, it's two. We have a three stage crop starting at zero. So zero, one, and two. So in our case, the maximum age is three, I mean two. I can't count, I'm sad at counting makes me sad and I am sad makes me sad that I'm bad okay and whoop de doo I forgot something so if you look under our mod items we created a, a new item it's called kale seeds and that is a example of a new class called item seed kale and I forgot to make the class so why isn't it throwing up an error? That's weird. Where's, where's it getting it from? Huh, that's really odd. Where did I put item C kale? Oh, there it is in the init. Okay, I did create the class. I'm gonna move it so it makes more sense. But I've gotta add a few more things to it. Okay, so I did have the class, we did create it. I'm not that dumb, thank goodness. Okay, this may seem dumb to you too. So I was wrong, I had the I had the proper item, I had the item seed kale, I just didn't have it in the right package, but that's good. 
So here's the real issue, and this is dumb, but you gotta do it. Go to your main class, and you have to register your blocks into your pre-init before you register your items. So if your mod blocks need to be registered before your mod items, and if that's not the case, you gotta move it. And when you go to client proxy, you have to do the same thing. Register your register renders on your mod blocks before you register render on your mod items. Okay, so if your code doesn't look like that, you're gonna have a bad time because when you try to actually plant your crop, your game is going to crash. So let's see what that looks like in the game. All right, so I'm in the game right now. I've created a farm. So you can see I've got this farmland. I use my hoe on dirt and made it into farmland. It's surrounded by water, so it's irrigated. And so I go up to my seeds and I want to plant a crop. So I right click just like you do with any seeds and boom, I've got my crop. So I know the code works. Ah, uh, no, uh, water. Oh uh, yeah. I'm gonna make a lot of kale, fresh kale, because you know, we have a farmer's market every Wednesday and just, it's just so perfect. Oh, my field of kale. Okay, so what we want to do is eventually, so that should look really low. So now we're going to actually make the textures. We're going to make it look good. So yeah, that is the next All step. right, so if you remember how this works, you put your code in and that creates the properties of the blocks and the items and yay, all that stuff. But then when it comes to textures, that's kind of a new thing. And so that's all about making the image file that you want. And I usually use... Um, either paint.net which is a free program or just pixlr which is an internet program so i'll show you through pixlr how to do this and um that will that will make your textures so this is this is where we stop being programmers and we start becoming artists who know a little bit about programming so first things first let's make our seeds let's go to pixlr dot um, with Autodesk. Oh uh, yeah, this website's still up. And let's go to the editor. We're gonna create a new image, and it's I'm gonna call it uh, kale underscore c. Wait, what? What was our? Hang on. Item kale seed. What was our kale underscore seeds? Okay, so I'll call it kale underscore seeds. Yeah, that, yeah, they don't know Minecraft for that resolution. I will ch check transparent and the width is gonna be 16 and the height is gonna be 16. Cause that's Minecraft, baby. 16 by 16. So click on the maximize thing and then go here and drag your zoom all the way. And now we're gonna make the seeds. So here we go. I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because I refuse. Uh, one of the biggest things you do want to remember to do is click on the paintbrush and select hard tip and then well, no, opacity is 100 and then width is 1 because uh, everything's really small on this and just go okay and I'm going to add a little bit of black just as outlines so blah, 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 blah. No, that sucked. Undo. Oh, good enough. I'm lazy. Okay. And I'll go back to yellow and just give that a nip there. I'm going to go to file and say no. Format is always, always PNG. Item is kale. Yeah. And I am going to save it to my desktop. Now I have to find it. Where is it? Where are you, item? Where is you? Okay, I found it. It's right here. So, I pull up a 
clips. I go to resources, source main resources, and under textures, I go to items, and I've got my unlocalized names there, and I grab it, I got it, I got it, and I drag it in there, like go, I click OK. And now I need to give it a JSON file. So that's enough for the textures. I now want to look under the models. And it's not a block, it's an item. The Caesar an item, and I click on that. And I got all them items. I'm gonna go to item, so I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna click on here and I'm gonna go to file, new, file. And I'm gonna call it item underscore tail underscore seats. Oh man, I haven't, I forgot, and rename, dot json, yeah, dot json. Remember, it's got to be all under, some of this is still for Minecraft 1.9, just remember it's got to be lowercase. Okay, so I'm going to find item name, which has all my basic information about how items work, and I'm going to... Control C, copy that, and go back to item kale seeds, and Control paste that. Let me just check real quick um, under item C kale. What's the item kale seeds? Perfect. Okay, so I did it right. So item kale seeds. I got all this data, and here's the thing. I I changed this to the name of the texture, and the texture is called. There's textures, there it is, textures, items. The texture is called kale underscore seeds. So I call it kale, no. Kale underscore seeds. Okay, and now I'm gonna see how it appears in the game. Okay, it looks like it worked. I've got my kale seed, so I'm gonna destroy some of these. So my kale seeds actually look like seeds and I can right click and plant them and make that ugly placeholder texture activate. But hey, my kale seeds look good. Check that out, kale seeds. All right, so we got our seed texture done and our JSON file for that, and now the hard part. So um, the way crops work is they go in stages. That has to do with their age, and they have numbered ages starting with zero and going up to, I think, six is the highest number. Um, and for kale, I have it set to go to three. So I set the get max age return as three, meaning there's four stages, zero, one, two, three. And each of those ages needs a texture. And generally you don't get much of a yield on your crop unless it's at, a, at its max age. So we're gonna make it, we're gonna make a texture of kale and what's gonna happen is the game is going to take that image and it's going to cross it to make the plant as it grows. Generally, the first texture just looks like little bits of plant in the ground and the final texture looks like a full-fledged plant. So I'm gonna have us do that next. Going back to Pixlr, I'm gonna have us just make a um, an early kale sprig, a little kale sapling I guess and so we still have our paintbrush with 100% opacity hard tip checked and the size of the brush is one okay and we're just gonna make a little brutally bumps maybe a little but 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 and so this texture is gonna get crossed over and this is what our first sprig of kale is going to look like. So I'm going to go to File. I'm going to click on Save. And I'm going to call this Kale Zero. And ugh, a PNG dumb program, PNG. I'm going to click, I'm going to save that. I'm going to put it on my desktop. All right, now we need Kale One. It needs to grow a little bit. So I'm going to delete all of this. And I'm going to have my paintbrush activated. And I'm going to go with kale one. And oh, I'm going to start sprouting some leaves. Uh, 
Oh, that's what a leaf looks like. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, whatever. I hate it when other people say whatever. Why am I saying whatever? I'm gonna make it darker. Kale's kind of dark, actually. Kale looks. I'm gonna be honest with you. Kale looks disgusting. It doesn't taste too bad, but it just looks terrible. I don't know who first saw that ugly, oh, dark green thing and said, "Hey, I'm gonna eat that." All right, that's gonna be number two. So I'm gonna save that as kale one as a PNG on the desktop. All right, and now I'm going for something that looks more like a bulbous leaf, which I kind of associate with kale with another bulbous leaf kind of helping it along, I guess. Sure, why not? I'll use a paintbrush to fill it in. And then I'll use the darker green to separate them. Because that's how I roll. First you think everything's going great, and then it's like, oh no. Something has come to separate us. What is it? Look at that shading. That's some. That's like some pretty epic shading right there. Oh my gosh! I have to save you. Okay, Kale one, Kale two. Save you from my artistic prowess on the desktop, and finally, mm, yeah, I'll switch back to that. Go to the brush. Kale three. Big honking leaf of kale lettuce. So delicious. So substitute -y. That's a word I've made up. Because kale seems to substitute for things like instead of saying, oh, I'll have a, a burger, you say, oh, I'll have, a, I'll have a kale burger. And instead of saying, oh, I'll have a, I don't know, a steak, you say, oh, I'll have a big bowl of kale. Um, so here you go. Hippies, enjoy. Did you know that gluten's not bad for you? It's just fine, unless you have an actual allergy, which less than, well, maybe about 1% of the population does. I'm sorry, I'm just angry. Okay, there we go, kale. The kale's, there we go. Um, yeah, kale's done. All right, file, save, kale, three. And now we've got our, no, we don't, PNG. All right, and now we've got our kale textures that we can load into the game. So find your block textures. So resources, um, assets, experiments, textures, blocks, and then find your kale things. And uh, Okay, there we go found them and drag them on in under blocks and click OK. All right, now they are there and now we're going to have to create our JSON files that will load them at the proper times. Well, first off, we're going to go to our resources and our models. Model. There it is. I'm going to close the other thing so they don't confuse us and click on block. Okay, and now uh, within this, I'm going to right click and go to new. I'm going to go to file, and we're going to make one for all of our kale. So kale zero dot new JSON new file kale one dot JSON. Right click new file. Kale two Dutch images. Right click, new file. Kale three dot JSON. And now we want to populate these files. Basically, all these do is they grab our texture. They let it know it's a block and it's a crop block, so it gives it that crosshatch look. 
and then it implements it. So I'm going to go to block name. And I'm going to select it all. I'm going to command C, copy it, and go to block zero. And I'm just going to paste what I find. Only instead for parent, I'm going to go to block, and then instead of cue ball, I'm going to say crop, C or O P, and I'm going to say I'm going to tell it that it's. So that crop block means it crosses it. And I'm going to give it its texture, which is kale zero. All right, I'm going to copy the whole thing and hit command C or Apple C or option C or whatever. I'm going to go to kale two and I'm going to paste that in. Only I'm going to hit kale one. Kale two, command V, kale two, and kale three. Command V, kale three. So I have the models down. Okay, so the models are done, at least the uh, specific models that grab the textures. Okay, but we still want to create a JSON file that regulates the, uh, that regulates the different states of our plant block, because our plant block is gonna go through changes. It's gonna grow. Um, and it's gonna grow from states, from one state to the next state to the next. So we're going to have to create a JSON file in the block states that will explain which models to use at which states of our crop. Which will then take us to our um, block states. So under your resources, assets, my mod, block states, well, whatever you want to call your mod, block states. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file. No, no, it got away from me. Arg. Awesome. And I am going to call that file after its um, its uh, registry name, so block underscore crop underscore kale dot JSON. And click finish. Okay. So what we want to do is go through different stages. Let me show you an example of of uh, wheat. I think I can find it. So I'm going to go to the reference libraries and look up forge, and see an example from the game. Check out their assets and their block states, and I'm gonna find wheat. Let's see if I can find this wheat. Double click on that. And if you see, there are, it has this thing called variance. It talks about how it varies and the different ages of wheat and, and uh, what model it uses as it grows. And this is what they call the different wheat models. So here's what I'm gonna do. So I don't, wanna, I don't feel like typing all this out, so I'm just gonna highlight it all. I'm gonna copy it. Now I'm gonna go to my block crop the next one and I'm going to paste it in and I'm going to get rid of the things I don't want for one thing I only have I only go up to three so I'm gonna get rid of all this extra stuff this ends in a comma we don't need that since it's the last one so that yeah that one should go away and we don't have a wheat state our things are called something else so let's scroll up kale zero kale one kale two kale three named way simpler Okay, so we have that. The I'm going to go to save all, and so we got our block states. We got our blocks. So yeah, we don't need to do the item ones because you don't actually hold the plant in your inventory, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. But we do need to actually upload the textures. I don't think we did that, did we? Oh, we did. Okay, we're good. Nope, nope. Never mind. I forgot something. I need to uh, insert my mod name right here. What is my, I don't even remember what my mod ID is. It's still, it's my mod. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna go to this kale and because it's not part of vanilla Minecraft, you have to put your mod title before it. So my mod colon, my mod colon, my mod colon, and my mod colon. That would have been lame if I forgot to do that. It's also lame because I go into the individual models, Kale, and I need to change this one feature that I didn't think about. Where here where it says all, we replace that with crop. Do that for all of our crop models for the different stages of our crop growth. Okay. 
save all, and that ought to do it. So we should be good now. Finally, that's what you're thinking, right? Finally, let's run this. All right, I got my seeds, I got my farm, and I'm gonna right click to plant my crops. Ooh, that's looking good. Them's mighty good seeds. Oh, I already got some growth here. Look at that. It grew to the next stage already. And we'll see, I wanna see if it goes through all the stages. Don't worry, I won't make you watch it. I'll, I'll edit this. Okay, now we got our fully grown kale at its final stage. Mmm, delicious. So fresh. Oh man, that video clocked in at just under an hour. That's pretty long. Sorry it was so long. It's just plants, man. They, crops take a while. Um, Alright, so that was our thing. This, is, this works for Forge 1.11. You probably noticed I had some 1.9 holdovers in my mod, which, yeah, the, the, those textures don't work because of the bad naming for the uh, the JSON files and stuff like that. Um, but, eh, the mod doesn't crash, and I just wanted to show you Kale. Okay, so, yeah, that was it. You made Kale. I'm glad you were able to sit through it this long. Uh, so, my next, this is the last video I'll make before uh, I'm gonna, I'm getting married. Uh, in a couple of days and so uh, you won't see this swinging bachelor pad unmade med with unmade med unmade bed with dirty laundry behind me but a nice fresh house with a you know clean non-disgusting human being that lives in it so uh, yeah just don't be don't be surprised um, and until then happy modding is that my catchphrase? No, I've said that. That was the first time I said that. I'm sorry I said that. That was dumb. Pretend I didn't say that.